In today's YouTube video, we've got a special treat for you. I am training up one of our subscribers, Newt, for a Madden tournament. And this is a recap of a coaching session that we did uh, live on my stream on YouTube. Now, if you've never been to my YouTube channel before, my name is Cody and I want to welcome you to my channel. My channel focuses in on Madden 21 tips and tricks that are designed to help you get better at this game. And we're breaking down kind of a recap video. This is an example of a coaching session video that I've done. Now, if you're interested in our coaching sessions, you can pick those up in the description below. There's a link that you can pick those up. And real quick before we dive into this, I also um, have a text message membership which you can join. My number is 812 216-3644 and that is where uh, one of the best ways that you can stay up to date with the channel but it's also one of the best ways that you can get free Madden tips every single week I send out exclusive tips and tricks to my text message members it includes the gun bunch scheme it include uh, the gun bunch guide it includes um, things like uh, the big nickel over G defenses it includes different things like the gun split close from the Pats formation uh, all kinds of things like that so if you're looking to really take your game to the next level all you got to do is pull out your cell phone type in your phone 812-216-3644 and shoot me a text message and i will shoot you those tips over uh, 100 percent for free um, but anyways what we're gonna do today kind of a special little episode my man newt is in a madden tournament and um he was asking for some tips and tricks and so what we're gonna do here is we are going to show him and break this down so newt Here's what we're going to do. First and foremost, I want to show you the depth chart that I think you should utilize um, for the Kansas City Chiefs. So we're going to go into online head-to-head -head here. And I'm going to show you this depth chart. Um, so this is for the Kansas City Chiefs. So I'm going to auto, first and foremost, auto reorder, always auto reorder. And then from here, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start with my offense. So first and foremost, what I want to do is I want to make sure I got a good back to run with. The best back for the Chiefs, at least in my opinion, is either Le'Veon Bell or Damian Williams. Either one of these two backs. Um, and I would actually, you know, Clyde, Clyde edwards helaire you can make an argument he has a really good change of direction. I'm going to say the best one is Damian Williams with Le'Veon Bell being the backup, though. At fullback, and this is really, really important, you want to make sure that you put a tight end at fullback because Newt is going to be running the New England Patriots ebook that we are releasing tonight on his Madden tournament. Um, so what you want to make sure you do is you want to make sure you put your fastest backup tight ends in at um, in at tight end. So real quick, what we're going to do, go to fullback position, Ricky Seals-Jones, and then we're also going to put in um, James Winchester and Deion Yelder, just to make sure there's no shadow of a doubt that the tight end position is what we're going to want uh, filled. Next, your top two wide receivers are going to be Tyreek Hill and McCole Hardman, with your third receiver being uh, Sammy Watkins and then obviously uh, Byron Pringle. Nothing too crazy there. Now right here, you want to make sure that your backup tight end um, can actually back him up. So what we're going to do is we're going to put Deion Yelder in at the backup tight end position with Kaiser right there. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to take this, uh, and I'll show you this in the, in the uh, lab session, uh, once we get into practice mode, but basically what you want to do is you want to move Mitchell Schwartz around. You want to sub him in to whichever the side of the of the formation their team's best pass rusher is. Okay, so for defense, what you want to do is um, at your defensive end positions, you're going to want to put your fastest linebackers. Okay, so my fastest linebackers, I'm going to be putting there. So I'm going to be putting Willie Gay there, and I'm also going to be putting Dorian uh, Daniel. Um, and it's really, really important that you put uh, these two guys here. You could put Frank Clark there because he does have 83 speed. Um, I actually really like to run Frank, Frank Clark at the defensive tackle position just for more speed um, on the field. But you can leave Frank Clark there if you want. But what I'm going to do for this depth chart is I'm going to put Willie Gay right here. I'm going to put Dorian Daniel uh, right here. And then from a backup perspective, we're just going to put um, – you know, whoever, it really doesn't matter um, because there's not a lot that's going to happen. We're just going to put some kind of backup linebackers. We're going to go with Damian Wilson here. Um, let me see if I can find him. And then we're going to go with, uh, let's see, who else, who else, who else? Uh, we'll just go with uh, Cap Capasan here. Um, now, at the linebacker position, what you're going to want to do is on your right of screen outside linebacker, you're going to want to put this guy right here, uh, Tony or Tanoa Capasagnon. Okay, 
Um, and the reason is because he's with, you want both of your outside linebackers to have low agility ratings. So you want him to be in like the 70s, mid-70s. So we're going to put Damian Wilson in here at this one. And then what you'll notice is now we've got two below 70 agility linebackers. At the middle linebacker position, you just want to put the fastest guy left over uh, for this team. It's going to be Harris and Neiman. So we're going to put these two guys at the middle linebacker position. And then for the corners, um, what we're going to do is we're going to put in our fastest corners. So we're going to have Sneed, Chavarius Ward. And then what we want to do down here is just grab whoever the fastest players are. So that's going to be Brown, and it's going to be Antonio Hamilton. Now, for the majority of our defenses, we're going to be playing in a nickel formation. Um, and so what that means is we want to make sure that we have Tyron Matthew and Juan Thornhill available in our nickel, and we can sub them in at linebacker. So what that also means is with this additional cornerback position that we need to fill, we're going to put Rashawn Breeland here at this five spot. At the safety position, even though we're going to have Thornhill and Matthew for like our three, four sets, we're actually going to use – um, we're actually going to use them at linebacker. So what we want to make sure here is our backup safeties are good to go. We're going to put Breland at the backup safety on one, and we're going to put Fenton on the backup safety at the other. That just has the best uh, possible speed. And then last but not least, we're going to put in um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Keys here at the backside safety. So this is the depth chart. Kicker is going to be this right here. Make sure on your kick return, don't sniff on this, right? Um, don't slouch on this. You want Tyree Kill back here. You want your best kick returner possible for this tournament. So make sure you have Tyree Kill back there so he can make some things happen. Third down running back. Um, this stuff's not that crazy, but just make sure that's the same. You want this to be the exact same as your uh, rest of your stuff that you got going on. Now, slot wide receiver, this is actually really, really important. You want to make sure that your slot wide receiver is McCole Hardman, okay? You want to make sure that your slot wide receiver is McCole Hardman. So it's going to go McCole Hardman, and then it's going to go Byron Pringle, and then it's going to go uh, Sammy Watkins, okay? So that's how we're going to roll with our slot receivers. Rushed left end, and this is for the dime packages and the nickel packages. So what we're going to want to make sure that we do is we get a really, really, this is where we're going to want to put our best pass rushers. For our diamond nickel sets, these guys are going to be the ones making the plays. So real quick, we're just going to come over here and take a look at the finesse moves and the power moves. But essentially, it doesn't look like any of these guys are that crazy good uh, at either one of those other than Chris Jones and Frank Clark. So what we're going to do is we're going to put Alex Okafor here. And then we're going to have Taco Charlton there. Um, so we have that set up. Rush defensive tackle is obviously going to be Chris Jones. Now, as a backup rush defensive tackle, I like to put Frank Clark there um, because in certain situations, another thing that you can do is you can also put those linebackers in. And we can obviously RB sub all of this in as well. For sub linebacker, this is really, really important. For this squad, you want to make sure that you have uh, one Thornhill at your number one. Matthew needs to be at your number two. And then your number three um, needs to be Armani uh, Watts or William Gay. I'm going to go with William Gay just because I feel like the speed advantage. Actually, I'm not going to go with William Gay. I'm going to go with Armani Watts, and here's why. Linebackers in this game don't animate. You need safeties on your field. So that's what we're going to do with that. Slot cornerback position, this is just going to be your third cornerback in your depth chart. So we're going to go with an Alex Brown right here. And then we're also going to go with um, our 90 speed, uh, Antonio Hamilton. That's how we're going to do our slot corners. And then we'll just put Rashad Fitton in as that backup. So that's the depth chart. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our um, – we're going to jump into practice mode. And I'm going to break down the scheme we're going to be using for this. So what we're going to do here, go into practice mode, and basically uh, I'm going to break down a couple of key things for your offense and for your defense if you're running a, if you're playing a tournament game. First and foremost, uh, you need to know is the skill level going to be on all Madden or on on all pro? If it's on all Madden, your defense you're going to want to run a couple different defenses. If it's on all pro, you're also going to run a couple different defenses. Uh, what we're going to do here is you always want to have your NFL Live playbooks on if it's allowed. If it's not allowed, obviously, you want to know your tournament rules. But uh, essentially, you always want to have those if you can have those. Now, on defense, we're running the New York Giants uh, defense. New York Giants right here. And on offense, we're running the New England Patriots offense. Now, this is a little bit of a sample of what
what you're going to get in our New England Patriots offensive guide. We're not going to show you everything, but we're going to show you some key concepts that can really be effective, and specifically for the type of scheme that Newt is running in this tournament. So we're going to go with New England on uh, offense, and we're going to go with New York Giants on defense. Okay. Now, um, as we're diving into this, one of the most important things to understand whenever you're going into a tournament game, you want to keep it very simple. You don't want to do too much, right? The game's going to go a lot faster than you think. And so you want to be able to maximize your execution. So having a couple of simple plays are going to be the key to your success. First and foremost, I want to cover your coaching adjustments on offense and defense. For first, on coaching adjustments on defense. On defense, what we're going to do for our coaching adjustments, we're going to turn auto flip off. We're going to turn auto alignment to base align. We're going to turn our ball and air defense to play ball. Our option defense is going to be on conservative. And then here, for these two, we're going to leave these on balance. And we're going to put our curl flats on 20 yards. Okay, 20 and 25 is what I recommend. Um, for this scheme, we're going to be going with 20-yard curl flats. On offense, the only thing we're going to do is if the game gets in a serious situation, we're going to put this on conservative. Or if we're going to pass the ball a lot, we're going to put this on conservative. Um, just because it's going to help with the quarterback pocket presence. Now what we're going to do is we're going to first start with defense because that's going to be the most dense. Newt was worried about his defense. So first and foremost, I want to give you a couple really, really good pass defenses that you can use. Um, if people are passing against you, a lot of people will certainly do that. Um, I want to show you a couple schemes. The first scheme that we're going to go over is from the nickel 245 double A gap. And what you're going to do here is instead of having mid blitz in your audibles, you're going to just come out in that every single play. And so the only play that you're going to put in your audibles here is this buck zone blitz. That'll be just fine for the defense. And you have the cover two in there. You have um, you know pretty much everything that you need. I would recommend you know potentially putting the cover three uh, cover three cloud in there. Um, that's an option. Another thing I really like would be um, maybe this SS mid blitz combo, uh, something like this. But what we're going to do for this is we're going to come out in mid blitz. Obviously, here's our audibles. We're going to have cover one hole, buck zone blitz, cover two, and cover three show two. So we're coming out in mid blitz whenever we come out in this formation. Now, obviously, if we wanted to, we could just put buck zone blitz in here and take that cover three out, and that's just fine as well. So what we're going to do here from mid blitz is all we're going to do is that this we're going to come out, and from this point right here, this is all we're going to do. We're going to man align, and we're going to hit R1, and flick the left stick down to pinch the defense. We're going to then shade coverage outside, shade coverage over top. And then we're going to bring this guy right here down into this position. Now, as you see right here, my assignment is to cover the running back. So at the snap of the ball, what I'm going to do is if they are not blocking the running back, if they're sending five people out in a route, I'm going to drop a purple zone on the side. And essentially, wherever the running back goes, that's where I'm going to go. And what you'll see is you're going to get some pressure here uh, right at your quarterback. Pretty quick pressure. And here's the deal. The way you get fast, 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 fast pressure um, with this is through, um, through simply coming here and getting really, really close to the center. Uh, one thing, you, and that's why you pinch your defense as well. But again, we're going to shade coverage outside and over top. That's absolutely critical for this scheme. Uh, and what I like to do sometimes is I'll even like, I'll take this lineman right here and I'll man him up on the running back here, as you see. And now I know that I'm completely free to do whatever I want to do. And you'll see here at the snap of the ball, you see that lineman is going to come in and he's going to get that pressure off the left side. You won't get it nano detected like that in game, I, I guarantee you. So that's, that's the right side pressure. Literally, let me go over the setup one more time. All we're going to do is we're going to come out and we are going to hit triangle R1. R1 down on the left joystick and then we're going to bring our user right over the center and we want to stand right about here. Now you don't have to worry about zone, inside zone or any of that stuff because this is going to run it. If, if they run the ball, literally just run straight forward and you'll be able to stop the run. From this point right here, if you think the running back is going to block, you're going to leave everybody on the blitz. If you think the running back is not going to block, then you're going to man up this left side guy on the running back right here and you're just going to pass commit. And what this means is you're going to be free to basically user over the middle of the field. You see you're going to get really, really fast pressure at the quarterback, and you're going to be able to get that user over the middle of the field. Now I want to show you, um, I want to show you this, but I want to show you this from the other side. So we're going to flip the formation. And what we're going to do here is at the same, again, at the line of scrimmage, triangle R1, R1 
down on the left D-pad, okay? And then we're just going to shade coverage outside, shade coverage over top. Same thing, we're going to bring the backside safety over the center. And then we're going to drop that lineman into a zone on that side. Pass commit, and to snap the ball, we're going to come down, and then we're going to go out and play some coverage. And you got everybody manned up, which is good coverage this year, and you're going to be able to hang. So that's mid blitz. Now the beauty of this is you can go to any coverage and you can do this out of that. So for example, I could go to buck zone blitz and I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to, um, I'm basically going to blitz all my linebackers. And so I'm going to add one step. I'm going to man line by hitting triangle R1, triangle down. I'm going to pinch my defense. And um, with zone, you, you might need to man align twice. Um, instead of man aligning, you might just need to base align, right? Um, but anyways, I'm going to pinch my defense down, shade coverage outside, shade coverage over top. The one thing I want to say with this, if you go zone blitz, what I would recommend doing is hard flatting. And then I would also recommend taking your both of your outside corners and putting them in deep halves. If you can get all this off, and basically you're just using the middle. Snap the ball, you're going to go, and you're just going to be using the middle of the field. As you can see, the pressure is going to get on really, really quick. And it's also going to, if you send all your linebackers, it's going to get in against the block running back as well. The next thing I want to do is I want to go over two different coverage defenses that are going to work really, really well with this scheme. The first coverage defense is out of man coverage. So what we're going to do is we're going to audible to cover one hole, and we're going to hit triangle R1, pinch the defense again, and then we're just going to bring our user right here to make it look exactly the same, to make it look like we're sitting seven people. The only difference is we're still going to shade coverage over top. We're still going to shade coverage outside and over top. Triangle right stick on the right and triangle up on the right stick. Then what we're going to do is we're going to drop these outside uh, backers or defensive ends into purple zones. And the last step that I like to take is I like to put the backer, the middle linebacker, into a deep blue zone just to protect in case anything goes deep. And now this looks exactly like you're in mid blitz, but in, in fact you're in a coverage defense from man coverage. As you can see right here, able to really kind of box some stuff up. I want to give you one other coverage defense. And the reason why this other coverage defense is really, really good is it's really, really good specifically for um, specifically for situations where you want some passive pressure. And this is actually out of mid blitz. All we're going to do is we're going to hit triangle R1. We're going to hit triangle. Um, I'm sorry. We're going to flick the or hit R1, flick the left jo joystick down to get the pinch. And then we're going to shake coverage outside and shake coverage over top. From there, we're going to drop both of our outside guys into purples. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drop both of our defensive linemen into vert hooks. As you see here, um, and we're going to make sure one of them is in a vert hook, one of them is in a spy, whichever one you want. Or you could even just man one of them up on the running back. Honestly, make sure you pass commit. But you see here, we're going to have really, really good coverage. Basically, all we got to do is watch out for a post route. If they run a post route, that's our route. But as you can see here, passive pressure. Make him sit in the pocket. We got a spy out there. We got a guy manned up on the running back. And we got some and we got two purples. Man coverage across the board. And you're gonna see we're gonna be able to lock up. Okay? So that is a um, that's a really, really good one in my opinion out of um, out of this formation. The next coverage defense we're gonna use we're gonna do is actually out of cover two. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna call cover two, and we're gonna make this look exactly identical to everything else we've been doing. So we're going to hit triangle right on the D-pad, and then we're going to hit R1 and flick the left stick down. We're going to bring this guy right here, right over the center. Now the next steps are really, really critical to this scheme. What we're going to do is we are going to take the left side guy on the outside, and we're going to place him into a deep half zone. We're then going to take the middle linebacker um, that's in a mid-read, and instead of a mid-read, he's going to go into a deep blue zone. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to take that left side outside linebacker and we're going to put him into a curl flat zone. We're going to take this outside linebacker on the opposite side and we're going to put him into a hard flat zone. And then this uh, slot corner is going to go into a hard flat zone. This is our coverage. This is basic Mabel coverage. Basically, we're going to keep everything in front of us. Basically, our job is simply to lurk the middle of the field. Right in here, we're just going to drop back coverage and say, you know, what's open. So that is our cover two coverage. As you can see right here, um, you know, it's going to take a little bit. You're going to get some sheds. And with the route combos these people are going to use, I guarantee you, um, you're going to do pretty good.
okay so that is the that is a cover two setup i want to show you one other one as well and this is from cover three so we're going to go to buck zone blitz and all we're going to do is we're going to base align because we're in zone we want to base align and then we're going to hit r1 down on the left joystick or down on the left joystick and then we're going to bring this guy down in the box now from here it's actually very very simple all we're going to do on the outside is we're going to put these two outside defensive ends in flat zones and then we're going to take that middle linebacker and throw him into a deep middle zone now you see what you have here now if you have time on the outside please make sure to get those outside corners and deep halves it's really going to help your coverage but you have really really good coverage out of this and really really nice little flow coverage you're going to see really really good results from this defense so that's the nickel 245 double a gap defensive scheme now what i want to do is i want to share with you um, the nickel 335 odd and this is primarily for one um, one specific blitz that might not even work because it's on all matting game mode this is very much a consistent blitz on all pro the key with this blitz is to have somebody that has um, 79 agility or lower to be the blitzer so what we're going to do um, is we're going to come out of nickel 335 i we're just going to come out and it flipped and i like it out of tampa too but you can do it out of any play in this formation and what you'll notice here is you want to have frank clark on the inside so i'm going to put frank clark right here chris jones is going to go right here willie gay is going to go on this back side and then in this position right here you want to make that t kappa Sagnon player go right there from there you see we have our sub linebackers in just like we want and uh, again we're going to come out in any of the plays primarily my favorite one is tampa 2. and all we're going to do here is we're going to shift our line we're going to spread our defensive line spread our linebackers qb contain and then what i like to do is i'm going to take this left side guy um, um armani watts i'm going to put him in a quarterback spy and then this back side i can do whatever i want i can throw them in vert hooks i can throw them in hard flats i can i can do anything that i want we just need the three-man pressure from this back side here so what you'll see is all i'm going to do and at the snap of the ball literally all i'm going to do is i'm going to click my right joystick in to send the spy so the ball is going to snap i'm going to click my joystick in to send the spy and what you'll get is nice little passive pressure now in game you will actually oftentimes get that defensive end to loop around if they're playing on all pro you actually get that every single time to work that's a very nice little blitz out of the 335 odd um, obviously it's not shown there but it is a good blitz i promise you okay and then the last thing that i want to show is from nickel 335 wide so the audibles you're going to want to set here are you want to put the mic blitz 3 as your audible and you're going to want to come out in mic blitz o so what I like to do is instead of having Mike Blitz O in my audibles, because I'm going to come out in that every play if I come out in this formation, then I'm going to put cover four drop in there. Now I just want to show you a couple things uh, specifically against uh, trips tight ends and why this is so good. So first things first, Mike Blitz 3, I want to show you pressure. Um, essentially all you're going to do is you're going to blitz your line. You're, you're basically going to blitz your linebackers. Then you're going to hit triangle R1, triangle down, triangle uh, right to shade coverage outside triangle right stick up to shade coverage over top that's your base setup and then you're going to shift your d-line to the left and you're going to crash your d-line out now all you're going to do with your user here is you're going to stand kind of right here you want to be off just enough here but if they run inside zone or quick base your job is just to shoot right down the middle of the gap and close that running lane off okay that's all your job is. It's very simple. And uh, I want to grab a better run. I don't think that quick base does this, does this justice. But this is just a simple inside zone. It'll stop any inside zone in the game. And the trick with inside zone is you just want to be on the side that the running back is on. So let me show you this again. Nickel 55 wide. I'm going to shift my D-line to the left. I'm going to man line, press coverage, shade coverage outside, shade coverage over top. And then from here, I'm free to do whatever. Now, sometimes um, if you're in shotgun and you're facing a run, it actually does a little bit better job if you shift your D-line to the side of the back. So here I'm going to shift the D-line to the right just so that I have better spacing for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially crash my defensive line out. So the snap of the ball, I'm just going to come right through here. And as you can see, I can blow, blow it up. Literally all I'm doing, all I'm doing is I'm 
once I have this set up, I'm standing right about here, right? You see how this blitz angle is kind of shooting the gap, essentially? So I'm standing right about here, and all I'm going to do is I'm once I get through the center, once I get through with the center not blocking me, I'm just going to click off. So I'm just going to hit the circle button. Snap the ball, I get through, I'm going to click off. And that's how you stop inside zone. What if they flip it, right? What if they flip it? What if they flip the inside zone? Well, then you're going to flip your play. You don't flip your play for the play call menu. You just simply flip it for the setup. You're going to shift your line to the left. You're going to spread your linebackers. And then you're going to kind of stand right in here. And uh, what you'll see with this is you're going to shoot right, um, right down Main Street, right here. Click off. And you see you'll be able to stop the zone. Now, ideally, um, you actually would flip your play. So if they flip their play, you hit square right trigger, flip your play, shift everything over. Now you see this is the this is the thing. You see this this blitz angle? Now if I were over here, look. See how he can't get in there? That's where you want it. You want that blitz angle right there. And what you'll notice here, completely different blocking mechanics, and you're going to be able to hit that, um, hit that gap. So that's how you beat that. That's how you beat the uh, inside zone. The next thing I want to show you is this: what this does for you uh, from a blitzing perspective, right? What does it do? What does this do for me from a blitzing perspective? Well, let me show you. Literally, all you're going to do uh, with your user is you're going to run him down a pretty significant, basically trying to occupy the center of the snap of the ball. You're not. Everybody's in man coverage, so you're good um, in this situation. Obviously, you do have to worry a little bit about the running back. So the snap of the ball, I'm going to run down, and then I'm going to run out to shoot the back. You see that you get right edge pressure from this formation. So it's really good for that. The other reason I really like this is you can audible to Mike Blitz 3. And essentially you're in the same defense. You're just from zone. Um, and all I would encourage you to do is make sure you're deep half in your safeties. But this is a nice little zone look from this just to kind of confuse. And if they're in inside zone, you can shoot that gap once again and able to stop it. So you're able to stop you know multiple things with this formation. So that's nickel 335 wide. And again, guys, this is a brief overview uh, in my ebooks and in my coaching sessions we go a lot more in depth than what you're seeing in this video but this is kind of to give newt a little bit of a summary of what we talked about now i want to talk about die 146 and uh, and how you can really um how you can use die 146 um, in this game real quick what i want to make sure that i have though um is i just want to make sure i'm just going to use strip side in it's fine um, so we're going to come out and trip side in. Um, so the, the audibles we got here, cover two sink, cover two sky, DB steam two, and cover two man. That's really all we need. Now we're going to come out in DB steam two buzz. And when we get to the line of scrimmage, we're going to hit square, left, um, square and L1 to send pressure left, square and R1 to send pressure right. So square and L1. That's going to send pressure left. You see the movement of these guys right here. Now, all I'm going to do at this at this right from this point right here, I'm going to uh, spread my line. I'm going to QB contain, and I'm just going to slide this guy off the edge here. And from that point, what I can do is I can basically click these linebackers in. You see that right there, and click them off, and you see they're going to go back into these spots. Uh, this year, I think that you want them off. You don't want them pressed up. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to shift my nose guard to the side of the running back, and I'm going to crash the line out. And essentially, I'm going to set up that same shoot. I'm going to stand right behind this nose guard. So if he runs inside zone, I'm going to blow it up. If he passes the ball, then I should get pretty decent pressure on this play. As you see there, I'm able to get really, really good pressure off that left side edge. So let me show you that setup one more time. This is, for L, uh, this is left side pressure. All we're going to do is we're going to come out, we're going to press coverage, we're going to shift our defensive line, um, whoops, I'm sorry, um, I don't know what happened there. We're going to shift our defensive line to the left, this might not work. Um, we're going to shift our defensive line left, slide this guy in right here, and then from there you're going to basically kind of, kind of just, you see how I can just kind of click these guys through, and it's going to get them in, the better, in a better position. So you'll see that like right here. Um, I don't know if this will work or not. But if you kind of click them, you see how they move? That's what you want to do. You just want to kind of click them and get them to move. And then you want to get onto this guy right here, crash your line out, and you want this angle. This is the angle that you're looking for right there. I would crash your line to the right. I'm sorry. Crash line to the right. But anyway, what you'll see, snap the ball, and you're going to get that good pressure off that left edge. 
And even if you don't get the pressure, you're only sending a couple people at the quarterback. So, again, real quick, spread um, spread your linebackers, spread your line, what I like to do. Um, and then from there, uh, what you'll see here within this, got to audible to Campbell too, I'm sorry. But basically, spread line, uh, spread linebackers, spread uh, line, and then shift your D-line to the right. Click on the Thornhill right here, and essentially you're going to kind of get in this little angle, right in this spot. Come down, run up the center, and then come off of it. And like I said, the pressure, it actually is more consistent than that. Um, again, it's it's kind of it does kind of have to do with um, where you stand. And also that you've taken this guy right here, um, that linebacker on the right, and moved him back manually. If you move him back manually, the blitz does come in a little bit more consistently. And what you'll see right here, um, pretty decent pressure. And obviously Chris Jones is going crazy. Um, so obviously you have that. Real quick, I just want to check one thing live here uh, while we're doing this. So option A is you can come out and um, DB Sting 2 buzz. Option B is that, and then real quick with dive one four six, you never want to run this if they have two, um, if they have two running backs, or if they have one running back and two tight ends. Meaning you always want them to have three wide receivers or more. So three wide receivers, four wide receivers, or five wide receivers in their sets. You don't want to be running this against I form pro. It's not going to work because they're just going to run the ball until the cows come home. So anyway, all we're going to do cover two sync. And we're just going to shift our, our guys here. You can see, just move him in. Shift the D-line left. Kind of move this guy manually backed off of him. Right in that little pocket right there. Snap of the ball. And now you're seeing pretty good pressure as well. So you could do it from both of these sets, or both of these looks. Um, the beauty of this is if I hit square R1, that's going to send pressure off the right edge. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to, same kind of thing, I'm going to pinch or bring this guy out. Same thing, same theory though. I'm going to sit right here, and you'll see same exact theory. The pressure is going to kind of scream in off the on the right edge, and you're going to be able to uh, to get the stop. So overall, um, that is uh, a little bit about the dime one four six, and you'll see here. Um, sometimes if you act, if you like unbase align it. You see how it kind of messes with the movement on this right side. So this is just, you know, just some tinkering with this a little bit before the game, and you'll be able to figure this out. But this is the basic blitz. And you're only going to use this blitz when you know they have to pass. You're not going to use it when they're able to run the ball. Okay? And then real quick, I want to cover uh, run defense really, really quickly. Uh, I want to cover two specific ones. The first one, uh, and we're just going to use iPhone tight here. Um, but basically... What you're going to do is you're going to come out in big nickel over G, and you're going to come out in the play cover three sky, or you're going to come out in the play um, SS blitz two. Right here, SS blitz two. So I'm going to use SS blitz two. All you're going to do is you're going to show blitz. That's it. Literally it. And then you're going to take this guy right here, um, or I'm sorry, the weak side linebacker, which in this case will be this guy, and you're going to put him on a blitz, and you're going to crash your line out. Now, if they run um, power O, all you're going to do, you're going to run down, and then you're just going to shoot him to the right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I told you wrong. I told you wrong. You're going to run down. So if they run power O on you, um, what you're going to do is you're going to show blitz, crash your line out, Take Thornhill right in this little pocket right here. Now, because you got that blitzing linebacker on that right side, if they run power O on you, um, you can basically um, kind of shoot this. So power O right down the middle. You see, I'm just going to come in and fill the hole. And as you can see, we're going to hold it to three or four yards. One other thing really quickly that you can do uh, with this is you can pinch your line and crash your line out. And you'll see here uh, the power O shoots kind of, kind of a, you know, you're just going to run him straight down the middle, as you see, and you're going to shoot it against power up. So let me show you that one more time. Basically, all we're doing is we're um, shifting our line to the middle, crashing our line out, 
We're going to stand kind of right in here uh, with Thornhill. And then at the snap of the ball, if it's power out, we're just running straight down, and we're going to click off as soon as we clear him from any linemen. Now, what if they run power O to the left? In my opinion, that's the most dangerous thing that they can do from this formation. And all you're going to do, if they run power left, just click off. Just get it, just just run him. Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to run him, um, that user. You're going to uh, just kind of lurk him, lurk him off of the ball. So, snap the ball, click on. Okay, I'm just going to get off of him, and and let him do his thing. That's what I like to do. Okay. Now, what about stretch? Um, if they run stretch, let me show you that real quick. So, pinch your line. Everything's the same. Pinch your line, show blitz, crash your line out. Now they run stretch. You're just going to run right through the middle, and you'll see your team will pretty much hold stretch. Stretch is really not good. Um, against big nickel over G. Now, what if they play maker stretch to the left, you might ask? Well, same basic theory, same basic defense, but this time they're going to play maker to the left. Snap of the ball. You should be able to run kind of right through the middle, and then you're, once you get him through the middle, you're going to click off of him. And essentially, he's going to run the play down from behind. So if they run stretch to the left from you on this, and again, like if this formation was flipped, then you would use the right side linebacker. You wouldn't use the left side. But if they run stretch left, you're just going to run right through here and tackle him. Right through the middle. What if they run um, HB lead on me, right? What if they run HB lead on me? Well, in that situation, if you know it's going to be dive, leave these guys spread. And you'll see you can kind of blow that up right there. You can basically come in and blow it up with that. Okay. So that's how you that's how you stop halfback lead. Literally, the middle um, of the line of scrimmage is going to open up. Like, literally, it's going to be a wide open angle. So you're just going to come right through here and make the tackle. That's halfback lead to the left. You see, halfback lead to the left's not going to stand uh, a chance for you to be able to, uh, um, for them to be able to run this on you. This is halfback lead to the right. Snap of the ball. Click on. You see, that's probably the best option that they're going to have most of the time. And that's why I say what I what I really think is um, savvy about this is if you are in a situation where you really expect halfback lead, then um, you know just kind of. I would leave the line spread, but if they're running it this way here, you can still kind of shoot in and make a play. Okay, so that's halfback lead. The next thing I want to show you really quickly here is uh, 26. Um, or I'm sorry, halfback blast. Um, so we'll we'll watch we'll watch this here. This is halfback blast. So this is blast left. Same setup. It's all the same. Snap of the ball. You're going to be able to run right through and tackle him in the backfield, as you can see right there. The next thing I want to show you is. Um, 20, 26 duo. I have that. Pretty sure I came out in 26 duo. Um, this is another type of run. But basically, um, 26 duo, in my opinion, is going to get the best best blocking um, out of all of these plays. Most people aren't even going to know that. I can guarantee you that. But essentially, uh, what you're going to do here is just going to run, run, run through the right and click off. That's how you're going to stop that. So that's Big Nickel over G defense. And if you're in the red zone, if you're in the red zone, I would recommend um, utilizing the cover three. And all you're going to do is you're going to uh, shade coverage down, show blitz. And instead of using uh, the linebackers, you're just going to use this safety right here. It's the same spot. You're going to stand right over the center, snap of the ball, and um, you're just going to you're just going to lock it up. So that's how you stop the run. Okay. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you a couple of plays on offense that are really, really effective, um, specifically from the, the ace slot. So it's split close packs, and the package that you're going to use is tight end at fullback. As you can see right here, it's going to put my tight end at fullback. I'm just going to put my backup tight end there. Now the, one of the plays, obviously, you're going to come out, you're going to run X-drag trail, you're going to run halfback wheel, wide receiver corners, PA, wide shot, all of these great plays. But what you want to do is you want to come over here in your audibles to ace slot offset. And you want to set the audibles posts. You want to set the audibles 01 trap, and that's it. Okay. So between these couple plays, and then what I like to do is come down here into single back ace close, and I'm going to put stretch in my audibles, zone weak in my audibles, and I'm also going to put HB toss in my audibles. So if I ever see them come out in a dime set, I'm going to audible down to one of these two sets. Single back ace slot. Here's my audibles for here. I like to put some of these different plays in here as well. 
okay? So now you have a really, really good set that you can audible down into in that situation. So I'm going to come out of my split close, whatever the plays are. I'm just going to come out of random play. And what you'll see here is, okay, so now what I can do is I can go over to this gun ace slot offset and I can run this level sale. What's really good about this level sale play is this route combination to the right side of the field. On the left side of the field, all we're going to do is we're going to put Tyree Kill on a hit smoke screen. We're going to put McCole Hardman on a hitch. And we're going to put that tight end on the left on a curl. This route combination right here is really, really difficult to guard. And what you're going to notice is that one of the people on the left are pretty much always going to be open. Either the curl, the hitch, or the smoke screen. Always going to be there for your offense. The next thing that I like to do out of a slot offset is obviously you've got to uh, run this 01 trap. This is probably one of the best shotgun runs in Madden 21. It's very, very difficult for people to stop if they don't know what they're doing and if they don't know what they're getting themselves, in, themselves into. If you ever see the, your opponent come out in something like this, you'll see here I'm in dime three, two, two, three, six. You see all the defensive backs on the field. I'm going to audible straight down into um, one of these formations. It doesn't necessarily matter which one, but any of these under center, under center ace formations, right? You can audible right down into it and run. Uh, I personally think running halfback stretch is actually very effective from something like this, but you'll see you get really good blocking and um, and you'll be able to uh, take advantage of that. It's what's called weak boxing your opponent. It's so like right here, you see he's in three frauds. So I don't want to do something like that, but what I would want to do in this situation is go to something like the play post. And what you'll notice that the with this, with this specific play is I can smart route my left side guy uh, and you see it's going to kind of keep him going on shorter. So I'm going to leave him on his route. Um, I'm going to leave Yelder on his route and leave everything stock pretty much. And this play is pretty solid stock. You're just going to make your reads and uh, and you're going to go with it. Okay. Um, one other thing about this uh, offense really, really quickly is this play PA post shot. Now, to show you this play, we're going to have to back the ball up quite a bit. But I just want to show you the power of this post route. If they're running a lot of man-to-man -man coverage on you, um, especially if you have Tyreek Hill, don't underestimate the power of this play against man coverage. So if they're running something like this, where they're taking their safeties on the outside and they're basically putting them in underneath zones and they're stopping your crossing routes, please don't hesitate to go to the play PA post shot out of a slot offset. And here's your, here's your setup. It's very, very easy and very, very simple. All you're going to do is you're going to essentially take your tight end or I'm sorry, take Michael Hardman and just put him on a smoke screen and block the on the outer. That's it. That's all you're going to do. And what you'll notice here is you're going to roll out of the pocket of Mahomes, use that escape artist, and you're going to hit Tyreek Hill. I don't know how he got on the run and accurate because it is Patrick Mahomes, but you'll notice that that's going to completely – it doesn't matter what they're doing, right? I want to show you everything here. So we're going to show you just um, cover one. Um, it really doesn't matter. This post – this post on the left side is going to come open as long as you put McCole Hardman on a little hitch. If he doesn't come open or if they use him, you can obviously play make with the hitch or do whatever. What you'll see here, just hard right pass lead it. And again, Mahomes will make that throw in the game. I don't know why he's not making the throw right here, but but he will be able to make that throw. Now what's nice about this is this actually is going to do really, really well against pretty much any coverage that you're going to face. Um, as you can see right here, I'm going to go to Dime 146 cover 2 ma'am. And if you'll notice, um, watch the coverage here. Watch the watch the um, little deep half coverage. I'm just going to pass that up. And as you see right there, Tyreek Hill is going to go get the ball. And that's a one-play touchdown against cover two man. So it's a beats cover two man. It beats pretty much every coverage um, in the game. Literally, all you're doing, all you're going to do on this outside outside player, just make sure you take McCall Harmon and put him on a zig or a hitch and block the tight end on the left side of the screen. By doing that, um, you're creating matchups, and you're allowing yourself a really, really good opportunity to hit this route to Tyree Kill. This route to Tyree Kill is a nice little shot play that you can go to um, in some of those key situations. Obviously, I already recommended a one trap. Um, as you see here, this is quarters, and I just want to show you how this does against quarters. This is man up 3D. That PA post shot play, you can use it at the end of half. Again, you have Patrick Mahomes, so you can roll out with him, which is huge for this play. You need to be able to roll out. You need to buy some time. But you'll see here, if I can buy some time, get Tyree Kill, I mean, you could beat Man Up 3 deep over the top. That's a nice and a half play. It's a critical play for the tournament. So you have that play as well um, that you can mix in with this. And then obviously uh, with PAY shot, um, one of the things I think, you know, just using your using your crossing routes, using your little routes to the backs, 
Those are going to be really, really important uh, for your offense. Now, before we take off, I want to give you a couple of plays that you can use out of the gun trips tied in in the New England Patriots book. In my opinion, this is the best formation in the New England Patriots book. Um, and essentially, all you're going to do, and the Chiefs are perfect for it, the audibles I like to use are doubles in sale, um, RPO uh, bubble. And I'm sorry, instead of doubles in sale, I'm going to use Pat's YN. And then I have verticals and PA slot corner. Now, the play I like to come out in is PA counter go. And we'll just go get some random plays once again. And what you'll see here is that same route combination that I showed you from um, that same route combination that I showed you from a slot offset will work will will apply to this right here. And I really like to use it out of a play like um, um, doubles, you know, double sale or whatever. All you gotta do is put the running back on a little block release pattern. Since you have tight end apprentice, you can put the tight end on a post route, pretty much any route you want. And then you're gonna put a smoke screen, a hitch, and a curl on that left side of the field. And you'll see you're going to be able to beat every coverage in the game. Very, very simple, very, very quick reads. The next uh, thing that I like to do out of this formation is uh, to take this PA counter go. This is another really, really good play. A play that's perfect for someone like Tyreek Hill. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put McCole Hardman on a flat or a zig. Take Tyreek Hill, put him on a slant. And then take Williams and put him on a little block and release pattern um, to this side of the field. And what you'll notice is this... Um, this route to circle just torches the defense, and you're going to be able to absolutely laser them uh, with this route. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do um, out of this is run this play right here, Pat's YM. Now, you can run this several different ways, but one of the ways you can run it is by putting the tight end on a post, putting McCole Hardman on a hitch, and putting Byron Pringle on a hitch. So just a couple of little underneath hitches and post. And what you'll notice is this is kind of similar to that PA post shot play. Um, but basically, you're either going to hit this post route to Travis Kelsey, as you can see right there, or what you're going to do, let's say they're running cover four on you or something like that, then you could go to something like this. Uh, we're nickel two for five here. But you could go to something like this right here. You got those double hitches. You got the post route. Make sure you block the running back. That's really, really important. And make sure that you smart route Tyree Kill's route so it gets really good angle. And what you'll notice here. If Mahomes has time in the pocket, which right there he didn't, he'll be able to get this ball. Tyreek Hill ends up making a play. He'll be able to get this ball over top of pretty much every coverage in Madden 21, um, especially if he's able to have time and especially if he's able to roll out of the pocket. In this situation, we're facing um, the dime, the dime, uh, whatever, 2 three, six, you know, whatever it's called. Uh, and what you'll see here is we're going to go to that same setup. And watch what's going to happen here on this outside. We're going to get out of the pocket with Mahomes rolling to the right and slinging it down the field. Now that time, because he was in cover three, cover three is the only thing that stops this, but if they run a lot of cover three, you're going to be able to torch them. So you have that first setup from PA counter go. Now I want to give you a nice little setup from PA slot corner. All you're going to do is you're going to take Tyreek Hill, you're going to put him on a streak, you're going to take McCole Hardman, and you're going to put him on a hitch or a zig route. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take Travis Kelsey and put him on a crossing route, and then with the back, I like to put him on a little shoot flat, little swing um, wheel or a block and release pattern. And basically, you're going to choose between the post route and the crossing route on that side. Obviously, you want to peak the flats on both sides. If they're not playing hard flats on both sides, you can certainly hit them um, with those hard flats, uh, or I'm sorry, with those uh, quick zigs and uh, quick little uh, swing routes to the back. But this is the route combination right here. And again, you're just going to motion them out. And you'll see here, this crossing route to Travis Kelsey torches pretty much every coverage in the game because of his route running and because of his ability. One next thing that I want to show you, or uh, one of the last setups I want to give you, is this uh, setup out of verticals. And this is primarily if they're running a lot of like cover three or cover two. But what you're going to see, literally all I'm going to do is just snap it, and you'll see these seam verticals, they're going to get wide open uh, against a lot of different zone coverages that you're going to face, whether they're facing cover three or cover two. If they're running a lot of cover two or cover three, you're going to get this wide open a ton. Let me show you cover two real quick, and all I'm going to do, the one adjustment I would say that I would like you to do is take Williams and put him on a wheel route. Why? Because if they're not running hard flats, you can take that wheel route pretty much all day. The other reason is that little wheel and corner combination is going to be really, really effective for opening up the tight end uh, corner route on this play. So let me show you here. This is a corner route to the tight end, and again, we're just going to pass it this up. You see, passing it up against cover two. It beats every uh, it beats cloud flat, so they're gonna have to really drop their zones back um, to be able to guard something like this.
Next thing uh, that I want to show you out of this verticals play is obviously this route to Tyreek Hill. Let's say that they're in uh, Tampa 2 on the outside and their safety's not there. You got that route. So, you know, never forget about that. If they're running man coverage press and they don't have a safety deep, you know, you can always burn them over the top of Tyreek Hill. That's something you need to keep in your back pocket. But the other thing is expecting this cover three. So if they run cover three on you, um, this is like the perfect play call for cover three. What you're going to do is you're going to hit this triangle receiver right up the seam um, against 3-4 Bear. 3-4 Bear does pretty good against it, but most defenses don't really do that well against this cover three reader um, because the way most people play cover three is they're going to play that safety, that, that deep blue safety is going to come from the right side. So if the safety comes from the right side here, um, you can see we're going to have a lot of read, a lot of open reads. Obviously, you can always get out of the pocket, make things happen with Mahomes, but you're just going to have a lot of opportunities. Let me show you this cover three uh, from the dying two three six, and this is what I'm talking about. If they play something like this underneath, or they're coming underneath coverage right here, you're going to be able to hit these hit these little simple routes uh, within this little playbook. It's in this little formation here. So trip side in is a really really big deal, uh, and we talk about it ex uh, a ton in our uh, Madden 21 defensive ebook, or I'm sorry, offensive ebook that we're getting ready to drop on this. But what you'll see right here, again, he's just going to get right up the seam. And of course, I can't hit it right now um, because I'm just not getting good 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 play calls. But uh, that that is something that you will you will use that. You want to call it maybe once a game. You don't want to call it too much. But uh, what you'll see is against the right defense. Um, and what we'll do here, we'll just try to just kind of force feed it. But if they're playing Mabel coverage and they're not playing discipline defense, you see that seam route right there. Don't be afraid to take that. Okay? Don't be afraid to take that route. Um, but uh, anyways, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's that's almost everything that I had to share with you, and I shared with you in almost under an hour. So. Um, man, lock up. Proud of you, Newt. If you guys are watching this video on YouTube, um, this is for Newt. Um, this is kind of an example of what our coaching sessions look like. So if you haven't already picked up a coaching session, those are those are in the link in the description. If you have more Madden questions, we break down exclusive full tips and schemes and eBooks and all that stuff every single week in our text membership. So if you want to join that, all you got to do is text me. My number is 812-216-3644. It's also in the top left-hand corner of your screen. We were on the stream last night with Newt talking Madden. Um, we did a live coaching session on there for him, and we're now doing our summary video to get him ready for his tournament. So, um, you know, this is kind of the video, and I just wanted to share this with Newt. Newt, I'm so proud of you. Um, you have become a very good Madden player, and you're going to continue to become an even better one through uh, what you're going to do in this tournament. So really proud of you, man. Um, get all the labbing in that you can over the course of the next couple of hours and lock in at 11 a.m. Eastern uh, time, man. I'm proud of you. Um, keep killing it on the sticks, and I hope this video helps. We got more videos coming today. We'll have video, we'll have uh, tip videos out today at four o'clock, six o'clock, and eight o'clock, and we'll also go live every single night um, at uh, ten o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And volume one, yes, that's right, volume one of my three volume ebook on the New England Patriots offensive guide will be coming out tomorrow. Um, so be sure to stay tuned to the channel. We'll have an announcement tomorrow on the channel for that. But you'll be able to pick up volume one. Now there's going to be three volumes to the ebook. So once you get volume one, you're obviously going to get the updates. But um, th there's going to be three volumes to the ebook. It's the most comprehensive ebook on the New England Patriots playbook ever written. And uh, really, really excited to share that with you. So, anyways, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for your support. And we will see you um, in our next video coming tonight at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time.